As someone who's super interested in CPUs, I can't help but feel a bit disappointed at how slow CPUs have been improving. I mean, they were doubling in clock speed in the late 1990s and even the early 2000s, but after that they just kind of plateaued. Now you might have heard me talk about AMD and Intel with, well actually AMD just released their 16 core processor and it's crushing Intel and that's super interesting. But no, it's time to think bigger. Modern CPUs clock at four or five gigahertz max. That's pretty cool. I mean, that, that's four or five billion cycles per second. But we can go higher. Researchers have actually developed a graphene-based CPU that can clock at well over 200 gigahertz. That's crazy! Before we get into what this is all about, Let's first start with the origins of graphene. It was discovered in 2004, that's 15 years ago, and sure, that might seem like a short time, but it's been a disappointment to many. People just haven't been seeing graphene products come into the mass market 15 years later. And remember, 2004 was before the iPhone, and look at how that changed the world. In 2013, the EU had a project and they called it the Graphene Flagship. They invested $1 billion over the span of 10 years. And their goal is to bring more graphene-based products into the mass market. Graphene Flagship partnered with a small company called Graphenia and they manufacture graphene wafers. One of the really interesting things that Graphenia sells is called graphene field effect transistors. Now field effect transistors are simple. They're based on an idea of an electric field effect where charges on a nearby object can attract charges on a semiconductor channel. There are three parts to a field effect transistor, the source, the gate, and the drain. The source and the drain are on either ends, and the gate is in the middle. The gate controls the flow of electrons between the source and the drain using an electric charge. The computer that you're watching this video on right now uses metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistors, but, but graphene field effect transistors build on that by adding a small layer of graphene between the source and the drain. There are many benefits to this. The first is a much better response sensitivity. Graphene only being one atom thick, it doesn't take much energy for the electric charge to penetrate into the channel, while for elements like silicon, it would take much more energy. And here's the big one. Current CPUs are built on a seven nanometer process, meaning that transistors are about seven nanometers in size. Of course, how it's measured varies on the company. It's mainly marketing terms, but that's an idea of how small they are. The one thing that's preventing us from making them even smaller is the sheer amount of defects that can come by it. It gets exponentially more expensive every single time you try to shrink the size of a transistor. For this, silicon is to blame because it's just so prone to surface defects. But with an element like graphene that's only an atom thin, we won't have any of them. Graphene is simply a layer of carbon atoms that's arranged in a hexagonal pattern. And because the carbon atom has four valence electrons and three of them are used for bonding with the other carbon atoms, there's one electron that's called the pi electron that circles around and it has so much speed. Like it can travel through the entire thing with practically no resistance. And this leads to an extremely high conductivity. And that's what can cause that huge clock speed increase from silicon transistors to graphene ones. Graphene transistors don't just have to be used in CPUs. It makes transistors thin, light, and flexible. Remember when you were a kid and you were reading those Harry Potter books and then 
you're watching the movies too, and then they had those like newspapers where there would be pictures that would move. And that's crazy because it's like magic. Well, it's not going to be magic anymore. It's going to be science. It's going to be graphene science. We can make e-paper like this and then look at emerging technologies that's done by really innovative companies like Royal, which developed the first flexible smartphone. It's a thick phone, but by using graphene transistors inside the device, it can be a lot thinner. It can be a lot more durable and it can be a lot faster. The potential of graphene based transistors is huge. But of course, there has to be something that's preventing us from bringing it into the mass market. Right now, the challenges that we're dealing with are just yields. For now, trying to put graphene on a wafer is extremely expensive and also is prone to many defects. And most of the graphene isn't even graphene because it's not arranged in that special graphene pattern. It's so hard to imagine something so thin being put in our everyday devices. But Graphenia does expect graphene based transistors to be out on the mass market by 2025 or 2030. I've read articles with people complaining about how graphene isn't out on the market yet. I mean, it is, but not for everyone. But think about this. Silicon was first discovered in 1824. But when did people really start using silicon? It's in the middle of the 20th century. That's a huge gap. And sure, right now, graphene might not seem like much, but it didn't win the Nobel Prize for nothing. And also, I'm sure the EU won't let its billion dollars invested into this future technology go to waste. So here's some key takeaways. Graphene has the potential to break the slowing of Moore's law. The pattern in which graphene is arranged in makes it drastically more powerful than any other material. And we won't be seeing graphene for some time, but when it does come, it's going to change the world. Thank you for listening.